Hey everyone, and welcome to the first video in my BCBA exam prep series. I'm Katherine Kellogg, and over the next 20 weeks, we will be covering the entire TCO for the sixth edition. We'll be covering a variety of terminology, examples, key concepts, and practice questions as well to help you best prepare for your exam. So whether you're just getting started in ABA and using this video to help you understand some concepts, or whether you're finishing up supervision and preparing for the tests, Hopefully these videos just help break down the ABA concepts and make it easy to understand. So part one, we're gonna really start with the philosophical assumptions. And this is just gonna be going over some of the foundational terms that behavior analysis is built on. So some key philosophical assumptions that guide our practice like behaviorism. So behaviorism views in psychology um, really are based on focusing on observable and measurable terms. Uh, this means that we analyze what people do and not what they think or feel. So that's the behaviorism piece. We know that, secondly, behavior is lawful and determined. So determinism is one of our, our philosophical assumptions of science, which states that everything happens for a reason. So we think of first then. We think of things having purpose and looking at antecedent variables or environmental constructs that might be influencing our behavior. And we know that things don't just happen randomly, although it may feel that way sometimes. And we might be told that, oh, this just happened out of the blue. That could feel true, but we know that there is a reason and it's kind of our job to figure that out. Even though it might be really hard and near impossible, it's our job to try to look at those environmental factors, knowing that determinism means that behavior is determined by environmental events. So third, behavior is learned through interaction with the environment. We know that by analyzing the environment, we can hopefully look for patterns and consistencies in schedule so that we can predict when behavior is going to happen. The scientific method is the best way to discover principles governing behavior. So our field really values evidence and especially empirical evidence. So empiricism states that everything that we do is objective measurement and we use experimental control to identify those evidence-based practices to then incorporate that when we are using the applied practice. So let's quickly review some key historical figures who shaped our field. First, Watson. John B. Watson is often called the father of behaviorism, and he really started to argue in the early 1900s that psychology should focus only on observable behavior rather than mental processes. Later, B.F. Skinner expanded on Watson's work by developing the concept of operant conditioning, and this is really when ABA started to develop as a field and really started being studied. So I, the idea that behavior is strengthened or weakened by its consequences was really groundbreaking for the field of psychology. Skinner's work uh, forms the foundation of ABA. Now, Skinner really differed from Watson and his approach to private events. So before where Watson was really just focused on observable behavior, Skinner said, well, we can still study the mental processes as long as it is measurable. And in order for those things to be measurable, they often need to be self-reported, which does require a, a bit of skill to be able to have someone identify within themselves how they're feeling, or whether it be rating scales, etc. So this was a significant shift from Watson's strict focus on only observable. Skinner said, well, we can look at both as long as we define it in a way that works. So maybe you've heard of methodological behaviorism, which really is Watson's view of the observable behaviors only. And then Skinner formed what we call radical behaviorism, which does incorporate those private events. So the next two terms to compare, we talked about determinism briefly, just that cause and effect and that everything happens for a reason. So if we understand determinism, that's the philosophical assumption that behavior is caused by environmental factors, which we know to be true. Mentalism, mentalistic explanations are more describing internal events. So although these things can be true, unless it's coming from the person that is, um, describing the event or the mentalistic term, we can't assume. So we can't assume other mental states 
or uh, internal events unless they're being self-reported. So mentalism explains, for example, if someone says, oh, they hit their sibling because they were angry. That's a mentalistic explanation. Although there might be truth to that, we, we avoid doing that as behavior analysts because that's our assumption. So we have to instead maybe ask the child if they're able to tact or label how they feel and they can describe that. That could be incorporated into our explanation. Otherwise, we have to look at the deterministic piece and try to determine what was the cause of that, uh, almost the why or the function behind the anger, if that's described. So why did they hit their sibling? What what maybe caused that feeling? Uh, and then we can then determine what to do next by looking at those patterns. So next, let's do a practice question. Which statement best represents Skinner's view on private events? So you can pause or take a moment to think about this. The answer is C. Private events are behaviors subject to the same principles as observable behaviors. If they can be measured, then even though they might be more difficult, if they can be defined and self-reported, then it could be appropriate. So that's it for the introduction on foundations of behaviorism. We will be discussing more concepts. I'm going to be posting at least a video a week for the next 20 weeks to hopefully cover the entire TCO. So thanks for joining. Maybe comment below your thoughts. And if you'd like more practice questions, I'm also happy to share. Thanks for watching.